quoted him. I turned in my paper. I have a very different story. My heart goes out to you. Thank you for sharing. I'm here to plead on the part of sexual abuse survivors. I started a nonprofit for sexual abuse survivors 11 years ago. And that was because there was no help 20 years ago when I started having flashbacks to childhood sexual abuse. I went to the satellite uh, mental health center in the rural community where I had lived for more than 30 years and said I wanted to make an appointment and they looked at me like I was from Mars. Even though I had, I had been on the mental health hospital board. And they said, we've never had a request in 20 years to work with a survivor. We only work with offenders because of therapies court ordered and court paid for. I drove four hours to Colorado Springs each direction for therapy. I've been a counselor at a community college. And when I had these flashbacks, I knew I couldn't heal by myself. I needed help. We do not have nearly enough help for people who need it. In the hundreds of women that I've worked with in the past 11 years in my nonprofit, Finding Our Voices, most of them have never had any help. Many do not remember until uh, Wings Foundation has done a, a research report that says uh, it's usually 23 or more years before a child sexual abuse survivor remembers and seeks help. And when they do seek help, it's just not available. And if it's available, it's not affordable. I think that our entire mental health system needs revised. And we need a lot of networking among all the people who provide help. We do not provide professional help in the nonprofit I run. We are peers, helping peers, just like in the AA model. And I think if we are ever to help the millions of childhood sexual abuse survivors that are in this country, it's going to have to be a lot of peer-to-peer -peer help. So I would implore upon you all to who are in the mental health service providing community to look at how you can support peer groups like ours and how we can work cooperatively with you and collaboratively with you to help the people who need it. It is still a prevailing notion for the people who come to us that the best way to deal with childhood sexual abuse is with silence. We need to change that culture. Keeping secrets of abuse inside your own head and inside your own skin just makes you sick. Our people have eating disorders, they have drug and alcohol addictions, they have authority problems. If you have been intimately violated in the most private parts of your being, you're not going to trust anybody and you're not going to take orders from authority very willingly. So you have uh, also emotional issues. Irrational explosions are common among people with PTSD. And we find that that interferes in personal relationships, family relationships, work relationships. All of these things are important. And we need to look at the whole individual and how we can best help them. In our nonprofit, we help people by doing art because that's a soft way to process intense emotions. We need therapists who are really trained in trauma-sensitive mental health uh, services. So I thank you for having this opportunity for people like me to be able to speak up and to let people know. I have testified at the legislature on um, asking that the limitations on reporting be removed because most sexual abuse survivors don't remember it until later in life. So if we have a five-year restriction or a 10-year restriction, they're not ever going to get anything. I also believe that there is a place for restorative justice in the sexual abuse world. Not everybody that I work with believes that, but I know hundreds of women and men who don't report their sexual abuse because they don't want to put their relative in jail. 
But if we could just get an apology, if we could just get a little help with our therapy, we would feel so much better about our own life. So I thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you.